Earthlings! So, uh, as you heard in my previous vlog, Deer Hunter released their album this Friday. Yeah! As a surprise, Beach House also released their new album this Friday. Thank you, Lucky Stars. Yeah, they just beat Rick and Wiki's record for smallest gap between albums. I've been excited about the new Deer Hunter album, Fading Frontier, for quite a while. So much that I'm gonna end this vlog with a track-by-track review of it, so stay tuned! So I was just at Evansway Park, which is right by the Fenway. Took a walk there, listened to Fading Frontier for the second time. Now I'm headed to the T for another Artifix rehearsal. That's the first one since Michael moved to Boston yesterday. I mean, he used to live in Hall, which is a lot further south, so he had to commute in via the commuter rail every day. But now he actually lives only a few blocks from the Fordham practice rooms, I think, so that's good. Yeah, yeah, that uh, yeah, I liked it on the second verse. I, I think so too. Um, I'll do my best. Maybe, maybe do a different hi hat. The science of clap symbols. Um, <clears throat> uh, do you need to do the hi hat thing? No, I don't. I just do it because I was. In Joe the over there noodling. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I I originally came up with it because I couldn't remember the the drum part Juan had you play, but I like it. Yeah, I like it too, which is why I've been doing it. Maybe um, maybe just do it on the second half. So like uh. That's not the bass line you're hearing in the other room. That's the one Trevor just played. Or is it like something that you can like, practice? Or is it just something that you can practice on? Well, that was a pretty good rehearsal. Um, we were a little rusty because we haven't met in like over a week. That's Trevor. He's the other genius of the band. And uh, that's Joe. He's the better backing vocalist. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yes, I can go to the calf now, but that's only because I'm in a dorm and I sang a lot better in the rehearsal and I'm turning into Me. Stephen Hawking. <laughs> We gotta run to catch the tea. Trevor says it's a shame I didn't film it. Next stop, Babcock Street. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. I was learning this prop before, so uh, it's just no for for midterm. It's not for my harmonic considerations. Babcock Street. The destination of this train is Park Street. It's improv, right? Yeah, but he's having us learn and like analyze and perform. And... My guy, we've done like minimal improv. Yeah. In the improv class. Do you ever play in your class? That sucks. We, we play, but it's often, it's like, they give us a. a I don't even bring thing. my guitar to mind. What? Oh yeah. Like, we don't even. That's, that's actually kind of insane. Yeah. yeah. Like, we play sometimes, but it's more like. 
Yeah. Okay, here's a tune. Here's uh, like we're doing I Love You, right? It's a standard jazz one. And you have to write the solo. Prepare for Next stop, right, Pleasant it's Street. Technique. And then we play it. Uh, so we get the full band and just kind of take turns going out. Everyone play their solo, which is cool, but it's, so it's not less, improv. It's more yeah, it's it, like solo it, writing. Well, it's, it's not bass improv, it's composer's improv. Yeah, which is... It's basically an arranger's course for bass. Yeah, and it's, we do a lot of singing. He teaches us like improv techniques of like... Four note groupings and think about this and that. And, you know, it's cool, but then it's like, let's improv using those things. Not, yeah. You know, go home, write a thing. Because then it's like, oh, what if you're yeah. stuck at writing? Or what if, you know, I'm just not feeling it? Not yeah. Feeling it. It's kind of bumming me out these days. Yeah don't, but, yeah, don't make me go home. Give me a bass line now. And I'll just. Yeah, I don't know. Because I had an improv class, I think, during my third semester. It's all jazz. Huh. I'm on consideration. Yeah, it's jazz. Yeah, yeah. So mine. I mean, I don't mind that. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. But I had, a, I had a jazz class. It was a bass lab. It was kind of the same thing in improv. But he would be like, okay, learn, you know, three melodies and all standard stuff. But then you would jam on it for like an hour. It was a two-hour class once a week. And so it's like, okay. You have the bass, like the yeah. boom, and then I'll take a solo, and then we'll just like trade. Yeah. Like, that's improv, right? No, yeah, Over that's it. Form. Oh, yeah. That's improv, you know? Yeah. I learned so much from that, but. That's good. Right. Yeah, I've never played a note in that class. Not once. I, yeah. I didn't know that anyone played in that class, dude. I thought it was all just like, you know, just talking about it. You know, yeah, we played singing. Paul singing. Paul we did a lot of singing. The like, destination of this train sing. is I mean, Park singing's okay. Street. We had to like sing uh, like some jazz solos and stuff, and guy tone and So it's kind of like an ear training class? I know it almost, yeah. But it shouldn't be. It should yeah. Be harmonic that's, what my, that's what my teacher told me. He was like, yeah, there's like three of us who teach this course for this, um, uh, of course, I guess, and he was like, yeah, none of us really teach it the same, so if you try to ask someone else who's taking the same class, you'll probably give you something different. It's Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. All right, Deer Hunter, Fading Frontier, track by track review, go! Track one, all the same, nice soft opener, it's by far Deer Hunter's least mysterious opening track since, uh, since N Animals. <laughs> Anyone remember N Animals? No, neither do I. Track two, Living My Life. I guess it kind of sounds like Deer Hunter, but it sounds more like Atlas Sound than Deer Hunter. Although the same could be said for all the same. But no, it's a great track. As is Breaker, it's a duet between Brad and Lockett, and I can see why, considering that Lockett's bits just sound like straight up Lotus Plaza. One of the best tracks on the album. See, Duplex Planet. Features Tim Gain from Stereo Lab on uh, keyboards, and he cer certainly gives it that Stereo Lab flavor that that I love and Brad loves. Track five, Take Care, kind of brings something new that I haven't really heard in uh, Deer Hunter or really, for that matter, Atlas Sound, which is an analog drum machine. This has uh, James Cargill from Broadcast those stereo lab sound alikes on uh, I think keyboards or some sort of electronic thing. Track 6 Leather and Wood is an old Atlas sound recording that apparently the other three guys made some minimal contribution to but it just sounds like it almost belongs on an Atlas sound album but I know Deer Hunter like to mix it up. Track 7, Snakeskin, it's lead single, it's funky as hell. It was kind of dwarfed by Breaker, but hearing it in the context of the album uh, made me appreciate it a lot more. I mean, not that I didn't appreciate it when I first heard it, but hearing it as part of Fading Frontier just makes me love it. Again, one of the best tracks. Track 8 is Lockett's song Ad Astra. It really slows things down. 
and the uh, transition into this track isn't quite as awkward as the transition from Leather Jacket 2 to The Missing on Monomania. So that's good. It's still really different from its predecessor, Snakeskin. I mean, Snakeskin is just this dang it, dang it, dang it, you know, absolute just grooving, jamming thing. And then Ad Astra is like this really slow sort of 80s slow jam pop thing. Brad claimed the band was a bit influenced by NXS for this album, and I can sort of see one of those moments on Ad Astra. It's one of those tracks that sounds more like Deer Hunter than Atlas Sound, well, mainly because Lockett's singing, which gives it a sort of Lotus Plaza vibe. But yeah, it's pos quite possibly the best song on the record, um, despite the long instrumental coda thing that was on here uh, and the previous two tracks. Although that's kind of a throwback to Microcastle where the tracks on the second half all had these long instrumental passages at the end. Finally the closer Carry On. Yes, it, it is Carry On, not Carry In, for those of you who haven't heard it. Yeah, and, and it's a nice closer. I mean, it's not Twilight at Carbon Lake, uh, or he would have laughed but it kind of has a few sort of Halcyon Digest echoes in it. Quite a few of these tracks sounded a bit like they would fit onto Halcyon Digest, although actually if they did, Halcyon Digest would have sounded a bit more like this album. So I guess it's kind of the album they were trying to make with Halcyon Digest, but not really, because it also sounds so much like Atlas Sound in certain places. But yeah, it's a great album from one of the best artists of our time. And that's it. Go forth and be awesome.